pruning, training, trellising, and canopy management all go hand in hand. Dormant pruning, before the plant begins spring growth, is the beginning and most dramatic process used to influence the vine into its proper growth habit. When we prune, we train the vine to a type of trellis and influence its canopy characteristics and management for the coming season. This presentation will give you the basics from plant and operation terminology to what the basic plant structure should look like, focusing on dormant pruning practices. So what is dormant pruning? The deliberate removal of plant parts during plant dormancy to redirect or regulate growth or to promote and control fruiting and flowering in the subsequent growing season. And why prune grapevines? An unpruned grapevine will have hundreds of nodes, most of which will have fruitful buds and shoots. If left unpruned, will have a plant that will be out of balance with its vegetative growth. The result will be reduced plant vigor, reduced vine size, poorer crop quality, and less winter hardiness. This plant with green grapes is more in balance with its crop and foliage. Here, the vine with purple grapes has more crop than the foliage can support nutritionally. First, some definitions. Training is arranging the fruiting buds of a vine for greatest efficiency of management and production of fruit, taking into account the climate, soil, and growing conditions. Training systems usually refer to the relation of the fruiting wood to the permanent parts of the vine, the trunk and cordon arms. The trellis is a framework of stakes and wires used to train and arrange the vine growth to promote fruiting and air circulation. Without training, the vines would grow like bushes on the ground. There are countless ways to train vines, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. And here are some terms that deal with the structure of a grapevine. The cordon is an extension of the grapevine trunk, usually horizontal, that's trained along the trellis wires. Cordons are considered permanent or perennial wood and carry fruiting spurs that are renewed annually. A spur is a cane pruned to four or fewer nodes, either on a cordon or on a head-trained vine. The head is the area where the cordon and trunk meet, sometimes called the Y or the yolk. The trunk is the main upright structure of a vine from which the cordons, shoots, and canes can arise. So after we finish pruning, we want to end up with a balanced vine. A balanced vine has a reasonable quantity of fruit for the size of the vine, fruit that ripens fully and at the same time in a typical time frame, and for every foot of cordon there should be four to six shoots, and the shoots should be three to four feet in length with 15 to 20 leaves with one to two clusters of grapes. And here are a few more terms on the structure of a grapevine. The spur is a cane pruned to four or fewer nodes and is used both as a way to rejuvenate a fruiting cane and also for fruit production. The cane is a woody, mature stage reached by the shoot after leaf fall. A fruiting cane contains the buds that will produce that year's fruit crop. A basal bud is a small bud lying at the base of a cane or spur as part of a whorl of buds laid down when a shoot arises from older wood. A node is a thickened portion of a shoot or cane where the leaf and its compound bud is attached. The internode is the portion of a cane or shoot between two nodes. Latent bud is a dormant bud, usually hidden or buried in the wood, which is over one year old and which may remain dormant indefinitely unless the vine suffers a major injury that makes it necessary to produce new shoots. We want the vine to have a single trunk with no shoots or growth arising from the trunk, and we want two cordons or arms growing at 90 degree angles from the trunk. The cordons can range from a length of four or more feet, depending on vine spacing and cultivar type. Along the cordon, we want spur or cane spacing of four to six inches, about the width of your fist, with 20 to 30 buds for each cordon. This would equal 40 to 60 buds per plant. Here's a vine trained to a low wire trellis system for upright growing plants. We can also have a high wire trellis system for plants that have a downward growth habit. Your first goal is to rid the trunk of any shoot growth or suckers. If you keep this up throughout the growing season, the plant will eventually stop sending out these growths. 
Some plants may not be as hardy for your area, so a double trunk may be desirable. There have been instances where one trunk was killed over winter and the one next to it was unharmed. This is a form of simple insurance against a complete crop loss. To train a vine to a double trunk, select the two strongest shoots coming up from the ground and train them to 18 inches above your cordon wire. Once they reach this point, take and cross them in the opposite directions and tie them to the cordon wire. By crossing them over, you reduce the area of the head region. The head area, sometimes called the yoke or the Y, needs to be clean of growth. With cordon trained vines, we often see the greatest vigor of growth on shoots that arise from spurs or latent buds near the point of bending from a vertical trunk to horizontal cordon. If this growth is not held in check, you will see a decrease in vigor along the cordon the farther you move away from the trunk. Spacing between canes or spurs along the cordon should be equal to the width of your fist or around 4 to 6 inches. This will apply to most cultivars that you'll encounter. There could be a few that would have spacings of 8 to 10 or more inches. Edelweiss would be an example of this type of spacing. Here is an example of cane pruning with 5 or more nodes or buds. And here is spur pruning with 4 or less nodes or buds. It's best if you have only one spur or cane coming off the main cordon at each node. If you leave both, you run the chance of overcrowding and shading both the current year's fruit and the next year's developing buds. Here, the vine's being trained to a high wire trellis system, so the desired growth direction of the cane is downward. The upward growing shoot is removed. When working with a low wire trellis system, you want all the growth of the plant to go upward. All the downward growing shoots have been removed, leaving only the upward growing shoots. If you're working with a high wire trellis system, you would want to do the opposite and remove all the upward growing shoots and keep the downward growing shoots. In grapevines, buds developing along the shoots do so in an alternate pattern, meaning if the first bud on the shoot is positioned on the right side of the shoot, the second bud will be positioned on the left side of the shoot, and so forth along the shoot. This will be the case in most instances, unless a bud or shoot has been damaged or removed. Here you can see two vines meeting. It's best not to let the vines cross over. They would shade each other, slowing each other's growth and berry development. These vines are being trained to a high wire type of trellis, so the downward shoots are kept while the upward shoots have been removed. Here's the bud on the underside of the shoot. Since this plant is being trained on a high wire trellis system, the shoot was trimmed back to the bud on the underside of the shoot because that's the direction the new shoot is going to grow. On an upward growing trellis system, we can direct the growth toward the center of the trellis or away from the center of the trellis system, depending on what bud is selected based on the side of the shoot it is located. This was just a short introduction to dormant pruning of grapes. As plants get older and larger, you will find yourself pruning and removing more and larger wood from the vine. But by implementing these techniques, along with some basic canopy management and trellis construction, you'll establish a plant that is easy to manage. It will receive plenty of sunlight to both establish strong buds and a bountiful and quality crop for many years. This program was written by Stephen Gamet, a research technologist for the University of Nebraska-Lincoln.